Hi guys! Today we're going to learn a little bit about pedigrees. And a pedigree isn't anything related to your dog, um, although it might be. Um, a pedigree is actually a picture that shows the relationships between family members and a lot of people um, use this term when they talk about their family tree. So this is a picture of a pedigree and I want to show you some key kind of issues with it or facts about it. We have three generations here and so this is the first generation, the second generation, and the third generation. In um, pedigrees we always show the male in squares and females in circles. So in this situation when a man and a woman get married and have children we draw a line between them and then from that line between them we draw a line down and then any person that's connected to that line would be offspring from that particular um, marriage and children. So this particular couple and how we talk about this is generation one number one generation number one number two have one two three four five children and of those children they have one two boys and they have three girls and don't worry about the shading quite yet we'll talk about that in a second so their first son is married to a woman and they have two children they have a girl and a boy their second son is married to a woman and they have three children a girl a boy and a girl the first daughter is not married second daughter is not married but the third daughter is married to a man and they have four children two boys and two girls so it's a quick um, picture of actually trying to understand relationships between people and it actually can be a lot easier than reading paragraphs and paragraphs so I could look at them really quickly and say that this couple has quite a few grandchildren and looking down here they have nine grandchildren so some questions that we could ask about this pedigree is how many grandchildren does uh, generation one number one and number two have so that answer would be nine grandchildren Another question you can have is generation three, number one, how many cousins do they have? So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cousins. Then you can say, let's say generation three, number three, how many aunts do they have or aunts do they have? Well, they don't have any over here, but one, two, they have, actually this wouldn't be their aunt because that's their mother. So they have one, two, three aunts. Actually I take that back, there's four. So generation three, number three, one, two, three, four aunts for that person. So there's a lot of different questions that I can ask you. So let me ask you one question now and see if you can answer it and you can pause the session to see what your answer would be. So let's look at generation two, number two. How many brother-in-laws does she have? So you can pause the program and come back and see if you can answer that question. So generation two, number two, how many brother-in-laws does she have? So you can pause that, see what you think, and then come back. How'd you do? Well, this clearly is her brother-in-law, right? So that's one, none here, none here, and another one. So she has two brother-in-laws. So let's do one more. Generation one, number one, and number two, how many daughter-in-laws do they have? So pause the program and see what you can come up with. And then after you do, check back in. How'd you do? So they have one daughter-in-law here, one daughter-in-law here. So they have two daughter-in-laws. So there's a lot of things again that we can ask by pedigrees and it's just a nice pictorial instead of dealing with a lot of text and a lot of words in a, in a document. So if a person is colored in, fully colored in, that actually means that they have a disease. 
In this particular pedigree, there isn't anyone that's shown as a carrier. If they were a carrier, we would actually color this in halfway. So we color her in halfway if she carried a disease, and we would do the same here, color in halfway. So in this particular pedigree, the people are either showing the particular disease, like this person has it, this person, this person, this person, or then all the people that are not shaded do not have the disease. So let's do a sample. So Roger is married to Lillian. They have four children, Deanna, Janet, Mary, and Bernard. Bernard is married to Jane, and they have three children, two boys and one girl. So what I'd like you to do is draw the above scenario, and if you need to go back to the slide before, feel free to do that, and then see if you can answer these questions. How many grandchildren do Roger and Lillian have? How many nieces does Janet have? And how many sisters does Bernard have? So why don't you pause the program, see if you can uh, jot down the scenario, draw the pedigree, and answer the questions. And then when you're done, come on back. So here's the answer. This is Lillian. This is Roger, Deanna, Janet, Mary, and Bernard. Bernard is married to Jane. They have two boys and a girl. So these are, lines are kind of crazy. The computer didn't really pay attention to what I wanted. So it looks a little crooked, but eh, you guys still like me. So normally if I was doing this on the smart board, I'd make that straight because that's going to drive me crazy. But anyway, how many grandchildren does Roger and Lillian have? This is Lillian and Roger, and they have three grandchildren here. How many nieces does Janet have? This is Janet, so we have to kind of see how many nieces, and there's only one, so here's the niece right here. And how many sisters does Bernard have? And this is Bernard, so we have one sister, two sisters, and three sisters. Okay, so those are some things. The only thing that I didn't draw on this that would be a really important thing to do is this would be generation number one, so I would might have Roman, Roman numeral here, one. Then I'd put a one and a two under here. Then I put Roman numeral two here, one, two, three, four, five. And then down here I'd put a Roman numeral three, one, two, three so that when you're talking you can refer back to the numbers, it's a little easier. So pedigrees can actually help us figure out how things are inherited. Are they dominant? Are they recessive? Are they sex-linked? And remember that the sex-linked chromosomes, those are the X's and our Y's. So those are chromosome number 23. Autosomal chromosomes are any of the other chromosomes. So chromosomes 1 all the way through 22 we consider autosomal. So what we worked on in class today was sex link traits. And so we talked about this, so you should have this in your notes, and we did a bunch of Punnett squares that will help you figure out how to actually do a cross between someone that has a sex link trait. And so we're going to use that information, what we did in class today, for your practice in making a pedigree. So this is what I'd like you guys to do. This is the scenario, Sharon carries color blindness. So you know what the genotype of that person would be. Her husband, Paul, does not have color blindness, and you know what that genotype is. They have four children, one boy and three girls. So the first thing I'd like you to do is draw the pedigree. And remember that women are in circles and men are in squares. And if she carries the color blindness, we would color her in halfway. Paul doesn't have color blindness, so his square would be totally open. There wouldn't be anything colored in there. So what you're going to do is you're going to fill in the known parents first, then you're going to need to do a Punnett square. If you want to look back at your notes from class, that would be a great idea. So you're going to do your Punnett square, cross Sharon with Paul, and then find out what their children would be, and then fill in the children using the Punnett square as your supporting evidence. So you're going to use the results in your Punnett square to figure out, do I color any of those children in? Do I color them halfway? Do I leave them totally open? So what I'd like you to do after that is bring that pedigree and your Punnett square to class, and we can kind of see how that all worked out for everybody. Okay? Good luck. Hope it goes well.